We're finally back in the studio um, with the video camera again. It's been a long time since we've been back in here. I'd like to say I had a wonderful excuse because I was in this long sabbatical throughout Tibet. Um, I could say that this is the internet. <laughs> it isn't true. It's a series of um, not unfortunate events, just we just got busy and went over there for a while. We were really busy here in the studio and in life. Um, Jim became a Canadian citizen way back July 17th. Getting up to that stage, uh, we had pots to get out and orders to put together. We put together our trade show and then we get everything, all our ends tied up and went to Calgary and Jim became a Canadian citizen. Yay, Jim. And then we thought we'd take a couple weeks off for a holiday. We wanted to go to New Mexico, but oh well. Uh, we looked up and we really needed a new roof, so we bought a new roof instead, which lasts much longer than a trip to Mexico, or New Mexico, or a trip to anywhere. <laughs> anyway, so we thought, well, since we're not on our trip, we can take a couple weeks off anyway. So we had some company come, and that was fun, then we had some company come, and that was fun, then we had some company come. We had a lot of company this summer, we've got a big yard, we played in the yard, and we had fun with our company, and we had forest fires. I mean, you had to be on Mars to know that the, the half of um, Western North America wasn't under forest fires just about. So we thought we'd like to take some trips around and see how it affected our area. And my goodness, that was unpleasant, I guess would be a good word. It was really um, sad to see. So that took some, so anyway, so long rambling. Our, our couple weeks off was about six or eight weeks off, but it was great. And so it's that, okay, now it's time to get back to work. So we came back to work and the kiln wasn't working. And how the broken kiln stopped me from making pots, I'm not entirely sure. We fought with the kiln and we got it going. And now the old boy looks old, but works great. He's right back up to snuff. And so I thought, okay, the kiln's working, the company's gone, half the world isn't on fire anymore. I'm running out of excuses, it's time to get to work. So I went to start plugging my clay, because when I can throw, I throw lots of pots. And I started up and plugging my clay, but the pug mill just had died. It, it had gone through a dying process, I really didn't notice, but it kind of like sitting in that tub full of hot water, all of a sudden things are really uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, my old pug mill was, was pugging out little three inch pugs of mashed potato type substance. And so that's not good. So we thought we'd contact the guy who made the pug mill, and we'll talk about it in our three handmade tools coming up. And we thought we'd phone him and he'd just fix it, but he hasn't done that kind of work in 15 years. But he did have a book that he wrote way back when he made the pug mill, when we bought it 15 years ago. And so he had to mail us the book. So we got the book and we got the, the pug mill taken apart. The augers were just worn out from pugging and pugging and pugging and pugging. And we took them into uh, Lethbridge to the machine shop. And we said, this is what we need. This is the specs of the book and it all lined up. However, their schedule and my schedule, well, I wasn't on the schedule <laughs> until we phoned them to nag. And then we got the pug mill, it was all machined and, and then put back together. Then we brought it home and it still wasn't quite right. So then we had to take it back to Lethbridge again. I was closer to the schedule. I was on the agenda this time, but that took a while. So then we got, got our pug mill back and it was, it's working. It, it's now that it's pugging, I realized how bad it was. But it wasn't really such a bad thing not to have the pug mill because I did take some time to play. I'm always sort of head down making pots, throwing pots, mugs and bowls and casseroles, but I made potheads. Now they know I, I know I grew up in the 60s and the 70s. These are pot heads, <laughs> heads made out of pots. And they were fun. They were really, uh, uh, really fun to make. I really took some time and, and enjoyed them and, and played and it was just really cool. I do have one last pothead I'm working on, but I really didn't like her face. Since I didn't like her, I ripped her face off. I think Jim should keep that in mind. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. That They took a lot of time and a lot of play, and it was just a nice detour from production. I want to do a little bit more potheads and, and detours from production and a few less bowls and casseroles. What I did bring to mind is one of the next videos I'd like to do is combination pots because these are a combination of a few pots and I think it would be fun because I can do a combination pot video and then we can go pretty big. And as I talked about that, I'd like to say thanks to all the guys who are watching these videos. I'm getting some feedback and it's really cool to have people just watch and enjoy what they're watching and let me know. I really do appreciate it. So if you're watching these and haven't subscribed, please do. And anyway, um, if you have any questions, please ask. 
But uh, the next video will be uh, big pieces of combination pieces. And thanks again. We're back at it now. Uh, we got orders. I got these. Some of these are orders. Some of these are just pots for the retail season. The, the, the Christmas time is coming. We got the ladies coming on Tuesday nights again. We have the kids coming Friday afternoons. Uh, speaking of trade shows, we're putting together our own Coots Christmas Crafter. No, we call it the Coots Christmas Market. I like that name. Jim's name. Well, I said Jim's name. Jim's name is Jim. Anyway, <laughs> we got the Coots, the Coots Christmas Market happening, and we're putting that together. And I'm involved with the community. We're put, working on a little Halloween party for the town here in the school. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish trimming up all these pots. I'm going to get the handles on the batter bowls. I got a stack of mugs there that need handles. And then I'm going to pug, yay, in my happy little pug mill that's all working and, and smooth. Uh, I'm going to throw some mugs, but I really doubt that's going to happen today. Because <laughs> I work for maybe, I, I, I say sometimes I work for a horrible woman, but today this horrible woman realizes it's 24 degrees Celsius or about 75 degrees. It's a gorgeous fall day and Harvey, the no longer studio dog, really needs to go for a walk in this kind of, not me, it's not for me, it's just for the dog. Anyway, so I'm probably not going to throw mugs, but I'll pug me a mountain and then I'll leave and walk the dog. This is Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, we, uh, we're still going to work. We don't have any family coming in. Uh, for dinner, so I guess what that means is more turkey for Jim, Harv, and me. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get these pots uh, uh, trimmed, the handles, the mugs handled, and pug some clay. Have a wonderful holiday. The Canadians who are watching this, happy Thanksgiving. The Americans are going to see it in a few weeks. I can say happy Thanksgiving. People who are watching it in six months ago, why is she talking about Thanksgiving? <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a day.